Hello and welcome to the Literary Bar, the special hangout for books, authors, and readers. Thank you for joining me today. I'm always excited to spend this time with you. The Olympics is over, but the memory of the brilliant performances of the athletes will always remain with us for the next four years. To Team Nigeria, we may not have won any medal, but you, have won us, but you have won a place in our hearts. And so, we look forward to 2028. Now, there's some weird conversation going on about a particular group being asked to exit their homes and their lives as they know it and return to their base. Igbo must go campaign. What foolishness. My amazing guest today is Anisale Co-Prince, an author who has something revelatory to say about that. Now grab your cup of tea and join me after the break because you wouldn't want to miss this conversation. See you shortly. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is a literary bar where authors and readers talk about their books, with your beverage of choice. With me in the studio, I have Pastor Ola Likon Abiola Kusheng. Pastor Likon is an author, a Sunday school teacher, a counselor, a member of the Hospital Ministry of the Good News Bible Baptist Church, Suleri, Lagos. He has written several books. His book, Expositions 2, talks about the Hebrew origin of the Yoruba and their Igbo brothers. It's interesting that the book recognizes the brotherhood between these two tribes before the current clamor for expulsion. Another compelling aspect of this book, which is my area of interest, is the depth of research that went into the similarities in their cultural identity, that is language. Get ready to learn about the etymology and language of the Igbo and Yoruba people and their Jewish origin. In my conversation with Pastor Lekong, we're going to go straight into the meat of this gist, which is etymology, and that is the origin of words and their meaning. Welcome to the Literary Bar. And before we go into it, I want to find out what led you to this research. Mm, right from my primary school, I've been hearing something about Yoruba meat, saying that Odudua came down from heaven by a rope. I look at that, that is, that is impossible, mm -hmm. it's, it's impossible. And you know, when you are inquisitive about something, I don't know how God does his work. God, there is a way God reveals himself to you. There is a way God reveals the atrocity of things to you when you are so z z uh, inquisitive about it. So from there, uh, I just... As I was promised, I, mean, I, w I attended Praharam Baptist Primary School, Muloni, Lagos. Mm -hmm. So when I was in Primary 5 there, I had a vision. God told me that I will go, I will go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. I said, ah, how can I go to Jerusalem? I was born as a, uh, into a Muslim family. So how can I go to Jerusalem, not Mecca? So, after 35 years, when I clocked 50, the dream came to pass. Coming back from there, all this mystery that I've been, uh, uh, first, first two that I've been, the one I've been hearing, like say, oh, Batala died in Lefe, and it, after third day, he rose up. But, but there is a Yoruba word for Jerusalem, as was revealed in your dream. That is Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Is Jerusalem where people habitation of people, okay. people uh, a peaceful habitation of people? Peace, Salam, Salam is what they call Shalom today. Okay. okay. Because as I was growing up in uh, Lagos Island, there, yeah, whenever somebody comes to our house, they will knock the door, say Moshe Salam for nearly you, yes. Moshe Salam. So. Well, after coming back from uh, the, when the dream I dreamed that I would go to Jerusalem, when it came to pass, I now discovered that I was getting it through some uh, Hebrew literature. 
just discover that uh, Salam Salam is uh, Shalom. Today. Wow, that is interesting. So let me read an excerpt from your book. Etymologically, etymological information, when properly gathered, assembled, and presented, can shine a great deal of light onto an unclear matter. Light either gathered by dutiful research or through divine revelation or both has a capacity of beaming rays of understanding into confusion created through loss of identity. It is such a light that I hope to shed into the undertaking subject. Somewhere in this space you mentioned Dr. Nandi Azikiwe okay. being born in Zungeru. His okay. father had lived in Zungeru yes. and Zik himself represented the Yoruba um, in a, had a political seat in Yoruba land. How did that come about? And now, when this is a man who was born up north, he's an Igbo man, and then he represents the Yoruba. So he's almost Wazobia in his presentation. How does this tie into the issues okay. we have today? Okay, I believe one thing I read from uh, from the scripture when we hear by Apostle Paul use the word "dull." You know, I believe we are not inquisitive enough. We are about today, so. I believe, uh, I know that uh, either Zungeru, uh, that the, the, Zungeru, the Zungeru is occupied by Nupe people. Okay. Or they call them Takpa. We can get that in the book of uh, Jeremiah. Takpa, mm -hmm. Takpahan, and uh, Nup. Nup is what is referred to as Memphis to, today. Memphis. Memphis. Memphis town. Uh, Memphis town, okay. Uh, so they came from there. And then the uh, Nupe people, or Tapa people, they are a subset of Yoruba. That is, they are part of Yoruba people. People that live in, they are the people that live in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. So, so, and then when you talk of Bethlehem, you are talking of Israel. And is the name Israel is not actually Israel, it is Ishara. Ishara. I-S-H-A-R-A-A-L. Ishara. That's... That is what we call Jebu Ishara today. Okay. So... That and then when uh, as as equal, his father was there, we are all the same. We all came here, you know, from migrated from uh, uh, the 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 uh, far east to this place. So at east. that time, they know that they are the same. It's not unlike today. We are by our people don't know many things. So you trace the issues we have to a loss of identity. Yes. Now, why is it so important for us to be related to the to have a Jewish background? How did the Igbo man and the Yoruba man and all the tribes that you mentioned here, how did we all come from um, a Hebrew origin? Okay. You know, as a, as a minister of the world, I always have that passion that people should know their origin. It is good to connect child with the longer identity. Mm -hmm. It is very important. Through your longer identity, you can now recall back from that what your father has done mm -hmm. what your family has done what your generation has done in, in the past if it is good it is normal for every human being to trace that path to walk in that trajectory i, have, I is, have i have never heard yoruba's um claim jewish origin Igbo people have been known to say that they are jews and a lot of them have even gone to israel to ask for their own inheritance, but this is the first time I'm hearing you um, anybody say that. Uh, point of correction there. Mm -hmm. So when you say Igbo people mm -hmm. are Jews, it, it may be very wrong. Okay. When you say, but you rather, you rather say Israelite, Israel. because it came to a time in book of uh, First King chapter twelve. Mm -hmm. there, there, uh, there is a phrase, common phrase, to your tent, O Israel. Yes. So they are to Israel. So the Israeli people were divided into two. You know, during the, the when Jeroboam, Rehoboam wanted to be king, mm -hmm. so Jeroboam disagreed with him, and then this and that. Uh, Jeroboam now called for, uh, to, uh, to your tent, O Israel. So is uh, the, the 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 people of uh, the is, uh, they call them Ephraimite. Uh, uh, Ephraimite. Okay. That's the actual name of the Igbo people. Ephraimite. Ephraimite. So that's the actual name. And what will be the name for the Yorubas if Igbos are Judah. the Ephraimite? Sugar. Judah. 
Judah. Judah. Judah. Okay. So, Yoruba, Judah. Judah. So Judah is from Judah. They now the English people now come out. Uh, they now have uh, we now have Jews. Okay. Are you getting me? There are now two tri two ethnic group now. They have been divided into two ethnic groups since that time. We have the Israelites and we have the Judeans. Okay. So that is it. So okay. but later the world did not call every because because the Jewish people are still one. They are still one. So okay. we now call them because the people that are that remain there, they are the Jews, they are the Jew the Judeans. Mm -hmm. When you say Judeans, you are talking of the Judah tribe and the, ben the Benjamites, the Bene people. Okay, okay. So, okay, you trace this loss of identity to migration because yes, people yes. move around a lot for yes. agriculture, wars, yes. and all sorts of things. Okay, it's interesting when we talk about the, et the etymology behind uh, this word and meaning because we know that language is part of a cultural identity, one of the most important but then again, you find people who are dividing based on the same language. Um, for instance, the Yoruba man, in a derogatory form, will call the Igbo man Aje Okuta. And the Igbo man will retaliate with saying, <laughs> So I'm just wondering how you, you state categorically through your research. I mean, this is such a, a wonderfully researched book that we are the same and our language and our language originated from the yeah, hebrew language the hebrew language but then again over the time this language has gone on to separate us yes i remember in secondary school where your yoruba friends or Igbo friends are speaking and they say oh don't speak vernacular here and stuff like that so how can we recognize that our language is one and uh, how can we unite you know the government wanted to, us to do wazobia once upon a time yes but i find that in this book you try very hard to link the yorubas and the Igbos, and the other tribes are like a footnote what about the houses i mean we're all okay. one nigeria the, for, first of all there is nothing like Igbo. Okay. that is just a uh, mm -hmm. pronunciation okay uh, for instance we have Igbo in several nations mm -hmm. 80, 80, 80, about 80 percent of 80 they are Igbo group Igbo not Igbo and Igbo not Igbo mm -hmm. are you getting me so and only 20 percent of them are maybe Yorubans okay yes in 80 and when you get to South Africa they don't call them we have Igbos here Igbo are the people of South Africa they call them BOS BOS those are the people they call African 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 also African African yes so so we have uh, they are they, they are there but the way we it is unfortunate that we don't know ourselves again mm -hmm. if we know ourselves like me occasionally i go to idumota mm -hmm. to minister okay. my purpose of going there my my going there is to uh, my, my ministering there is to meet the Igbo spear part sellers and i tell them so pastor i must ask you in this your research and interest in languages how many nigerian languages do you speak i don't i don't speak more than english uh, and uh, yoruba but other ways in yes. other languages yes. i pick, pick, I just speak there what surprised you I most in, in in during your the course of your research what surprised you most about the languages that we have uh, can i say surprise yes can i uh, I used to argue with my colleagues in school in those days that we say uh, in Nigeria we speak 400, we are 400 tribes, mm -hmm. this and that. I would say we are not 400 tribes, that we only have three tribes. Mm -hmm. And I will mention uh, and, uh, Israelites, mm -hmm. the Awusas, and some other mis uh, multitude okay are you getting me that's what i would tell them so this other multitude who would be in this multitude since yeah, the others have been identified will be, will be there. okay and we have some other people that join us to the greeks mm -hmm. greeks yes the agons okay the agents they call them as the agents. that's what we call agon 
Okay. So, but we don't know all those things because when we are in the land of uh, Israel, people, the Greek people were with us. Mm -hmm. Like when you talk of etymology, for instance, yes, is from the uh, Latin word etymon, etymon, mm -hmm. and the Greek call it etymon also. So the Greek call it etymon. The, you cannot separate the Greeks and the Latins, and then. Uh, it came to a time even the Israelites they cannot speak their Hebrew language fluently. Just like our children today, they speak English. They don't know the, their language again. So why is it important to link us up with Israel? I mean, why not another no, tribe? Uh, uh, you know, the, we need to we, uh, we need to say the truth. Okay. We don't have any other place than the, because I said. Your name and your and your language, they are pointers to your origin. Yes, are yes. pointers to origin. And uh, the, why should you now deviate this and that? I know people. In, uh, when I took this book to University of Lagos, uh, then uh, one professor was telling me that why, uh, why can't I write that Israel is from Ilefe? Mm -hmm. See. There is no history of uh, Ilefe in the like uh, history of Israel. History of Israel is known in the Bible. They have been writing from ancient, and our people too have been writing from ancient. Because when you get to Ilefe, you see Obel the obelisk of uh, Oramion. Mm -hmm. He wrote his name. The man wrote his name there, mm -hmm. and he wrote it in Hebrew. Hebrew oh, letter. Wow! Wow! It's something we have to. Uh, yes, I I took the picture in the book. Okay. So okay, he wrote it in Hebrew. That I wrote Royon, Royon, Aru. Uh, 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 that is English spelling. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, but today the Hebrew people are now spelling Royon as Aru A Y Y Aru A H Y O N E Royon. Oh, okay. As against uh, uh, the word we spell here, uh, Aru A N. Y A N. Okay, uh, before Arame. we round up uh, this conversation, I'm going to read something that um, a quote from Dr. Wankoti Mwezigwe. Okay. And he says, All the similarities in vocabulary tend to point to one direction. That is, that the Igbo, Edo, Yoruba, Igede, Igala, Idoma, Nupe, and Igbira, once in the remote past, spoke one common language, language. where one people that's, that's and lived in one common area. So if we're all the same and yet we tend to live in strife and continuous turmoil, what would be your last words to the people of uh, Niger Ndibo and their Yoruba brothers as they okay. battle my what i will advise and that and what i've been advising is that let us try to know what you're supposed to know don't let us be by god -tree. don't let us be you know uh, running after what you are going to eat alone what you are going to eat will only sustain you for a moment mm -hmm. but the value you have mm -hmm. will sustain you for last uh, for many for decades for years forever Mm -hmm. That's the value we have. So let us dig more into our history to know ourselves. Just as, as I told you earlier on, talk earlier on, that we're doing the AJ Festival in Leife. Oni called the Ishibu brothers that they're supposed to be doing this festival together. And the people of Ibo replied that, ah, what concerns us with this? The Igbo have forgotten that the first, they are the first settler in West Africa, not even in Lefe, you know. In West Africa, they are the first settlers there. Mm -hmm. I was sent by the church to Lefe one day to go and minister in one church. When, I f when we finished service, as I was going back to enter uh, the car to go, to go back to, to come back to Lagos, I just see a, a crowd rushing after me, say, Pastor, let me tell you, Pastor, wait for us, led by one honorable. On my Oshun State House of Assembly. He said, Pastor, Igbo, I want to up the Lefe. Who are the first people to, to settle in Lefe? I said, uh, They are the Anago people now. Anago means, Anago is a Greek word meaning going up. 
when the when the king of Assyria came to cut uh, the northern kingdom away, mm -hmm. are you getting me? So I said that the man now faced them that Musafuni, I told you now, I told you that is what Pastor has confirmed now. Wow. So that is the truth. But people don't know that again. That is that that led us to when you say Anambra, what is the meaning of Anambra? I have Anambra, Anambra indicates is uh, Anam in uh, Hebrew indicates the image of new beginning. Mm -hmm. Bara, mm -hmm. Bara means uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, like when you say Bere, Bere, you start. Mm -hmm. Are you getting? So they have the same consonant. New beginning. New beginning. Oh, when okay. they left Ilefe to the present place today. Okay. Are you getting me? Okay. Or if you don't want to call it a number, you call it Mahabara. Mahabara. Bara. Are you getting me? So that is it. But people don't know all those things again. I, I think we will need to continue this um, conversation because uh, when people know of their history, they will do better by themselves and by their neighbors. So I think fundamentally, we're not just neighbors. We are one people. We are I think one that people. We are one people. So, uh, Pastor Leko, thank you so much. And this conversation, I told you before that uh, if we're to take this book in bits, we'll be here for like a week trying to unravel so, so, and, um, and unbundle what's in this book. So, I want to say a big thank you to you for joining us and for sharing this wealth of information. We need this more than ever now. So, to the people who are be, being funny, we are one people. That, sh that should not be counted. Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying that even beyond the movement of going, okay. you know that we have ethnic uh, division yeah, amongst know. all of us, you know. So I just want to encourage people to remember that we are one. Like the South Africans will say, uh, Ubuntu. I exist because of you and you exist because of me. So uh, thank you so much, Pastor, thank for you. Thank being, you. being here with me. So um, after the break, we will come back and talk about love in an interesting way. So join me after the break. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Welcome back. August 19th is World Humanitarian Day. On this day, we remember the selfless service of humanitarian aid workers in the world and the dangerous conditions in which they serve. On August 12, 19, 2003, a bomb attack on the Canal Hotel in Baghdad, Iraq, killed 22 humanitarian aid workers. Five years later, the General Assembly designated August 19th as World Humanitarian Aid Day. This year's theme is Act for Humanity, hashtag Act for Humanity. The aim is to address the alarming rise in attacks against humanitarian aid workers and civilians. Also, to advocate for the enforcement of international humanitarian law to end impunity for these violations these dastardly acts are going on in different parts of the world due to insurgency and various acts of terrorism. Nigerian aid workers have sadly fallen victim to these nauseating crimes in the line of duty. Also, August 15 is Indian Independence Day. And I want to use this opportunity, I want to, use this opportunity to highlight Reclaim the Night campaign because of the female trainee doctor that was raped and murdered in Kolkata, India. Also, she was doing this as part of her humanitarian support for the people who are indigent. And it is sad that women do not have the independence to be able to be themselves in a place like India today and also for the rest of the world. And this crime against women working in hospitals, doctors, nurses has been ongoing. So in recognition of Indian Independence Day, I want to say, let the women reclaim their freedom and be able to thrive in their own country. So today's poem is by Hafiz 
a great 14th century Persian poet. Hafiz speaks of love. I thought we'll be talking about love. Hafiz speaks of love and God in the same breath. To remind all of us of our humanity, I will read from his sensational collection of poems translated by Daniel Ladinsky and published by Penguin Books in 2003. This is a very short poem. And it says, the subject tonight is love. The subject tonight is love. And for tomorrow night as well. As a matter of fact, I know of no better topic for us to discuss until we all die. So I'll say to you that we have tried hatred. It's not working. We've tried indifference. It's not, it's not working either. We've tried sitting on the fence. On the fence. Kulewek. So I'm saying, let us try love. Let's be insistent and consistent in love. What do we benefit from killing one another? Why do we need to have a special day for people who are just serving selflessly just because they were murdered? So I'm asking all of you, let us unite in love. Love is always better than hatred. So please, to all the people giving their lives, their, their energy and their talent to supporting the world in conflict regions and supporting people in different areas where access to Medicare is very limited. I'd say that I send you my love and I give you your flowers. More grease to your elbow. And may we come together to create a safer environment for the people who are humanitarian aid workers. I hope you have enjoyed our time together. I want to say a big thank you to my guests for the illuminating conversation. And thank you for staying with me. Please follow us on Facebook, X and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can watch us on DSTV channel 408 and on YouTube. My name is Chinedu. Until I come your way next time, make your life a great story. Thank you. Bye-bye.